In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between asynchronous and synchronous code in Ionic. And uh, now, like a lot of concepts we covered, this isn't something that is specific to Ionic. It's uh, general to uh, programming in general, really, I guess. Um, but it's certainly something we need to be aware of when working with languages like JavaScript, and especially when we're dealing with things like communicating with servers and loading in data. Uh, that is when this becomes an issue. Now I've recently uh, released an article about this uh, which I will link to uh, but I thought it would be a good idea to talk through it a bit as well because I think the concept can be quite uh, confusing until it kind of clicks in your head a little bit. And so the basic idea is that uh, synchronous code is code that executes sequentially uh, and it happens right away. So when you're doing things like uh, making function calls, uh, maybe you're doing things like adding numbers together or uh, displaying something on the screen, those operations are performed in the order that you call them, the way that they're set out in your uh, file, and everything just kind of happens one after the other. Uh, so you don't really need to worry about the order in which things are happening because it's obvious. Uh, with asynchronous code, it's a little bit different. When you're using asynchronous code, you might have it somewhere uh, in your the flow of your program. It might be the first thing you do, but it's not necessarily executed and finished straight away. It might not execute until later. This can cause problems with things sort of happening out of order. You might try to load in some data uh, right away, but if that data is going to take, say, 10 seconds to load, uh, just to exaggerate a little bit, if the, the rest of your program is going to uh, go on and continue functioning after that, and if you're relying on that data and it's not available yet, it's going to cause problems. And so we've run into issues like this with Ionic. Uh, one common example is when using uh, the storage mechanism. Uh, loading data in from storage in Ionic isn't synchronous, it's asynchronous. So when we make a call to load in that data, it doesn't happen right away. So what I'm going to do is just run through a couple of examples and talk through uh, the concept a little bit. So I have an application up here already. Uh, we're gonna use this as an example. Uh, what we're going to do is set up the uh, the storage service um, because it, as it is an example, a common example of something that is asynchronous. Um, it's certainly not the only thing. Uh, basically, any sort of HTTP request you're making will be asynchronous. Um, anything that returns like a promise or an observable is going to be asynchronous. Uh, so in order to use the storage service, we need to set it up in uh, the module file here. And you can find out uh, how to do that in the, the documentation here. It's listed. Um, how you need to set this up. So you just need to import this Ionic storage module, add that to your app.module.ts file, and then make sure you also add it to the import section. So now we should be able to uh, import that anywhere on our application and make use of that storage service. Uh, if you aren't familiar with the storage service, basically it's just a little API that Ionic provides that allows us to easily uh, set and retrieve simple key value uh, data pairs uh, in a local storage uh, or even a native storage if that's available. Uh, but that's not really the focus of this uh, video. I just want to mainly focus on the fact that it's asynchronous and loading in that data like you see here with storage.get, uh, that is an asynchronous operation uh, which returns a promise. So I'm going to make use of that in uh, the home page here. Uh, so what we're going to do is again import uh, the uh, storage uh, the storage service, but we're not going to be importing the uh, module this time. We just want to import uh, storage. And we'll add that uh, to our imports, and we're also going to have to inject that so that we can use it throughout this class. So to start off with, I'm just going to make sure we have some value set in storage that we can grab and work with. So I'm just going to call this dot storage dot set, and we'll just set a um, we'll just set a a, a key of uh, test and we'll give that a value of, uh, we'll just say hello. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the data says. So we'll save that and if I just um, let the application load now that's going to set that in storage for us and then we don't really have to worry about it uh, anymore. So that should be set now so really I can just, I'll just comment this out for now because uh, we don't need to keep setting that again and again. So what I want to do first is highlight the fact that asynchronous code is going to execute out of order compared to the synchronous code. So if I just do some uh, stuff in here, let's say I'll just add a console.log statement and we'll just say uh, 
uh, start of ion view did load. Now after we do that we're going to try and access uh, a value that's in storage. Now after we do that we're going to try and access a value that's in storage. So we can use the get method. So we can do this.storage.get and we called the key test. So we're going to get the value for that. And since this returns a promise we can't just assign the data directly. We can't just say let data equal this.storage.get test uh, because that's returning a promise. Uh, so that's not going to give us anything useful. Uh, we need to handle that promise. We need to set up a then handler which will get that data passed into it and then we can log it out. And so we're not actually going to log the data itself out but what I'm going to do is add a statement in here. Um, so we could do console.log data to get uh, the value of hello here. Uh, but just to make this more obvious, I want to say that uh, uh, data has been retrieved from storage. And then beneath this, I'm just going to write uh, end of iron view did load. So if you're not familiar with uh, asynchronous code, you might look at this and think, well, what's obviously going to happen in the console is we're going to get this logged out, and then we're going to get this logged out, and then we'll get this logged out. Uh, but that's not what will happen. So I'll save this and we'll take a look in the browser. So you see at the top here we have start of iron view did load, uh, but then right away we skip right to end of iron view did load. And then even all this other stuff happens here, so we get these warnings uh, which just pop up normally. Um, but there's this delay and then we get data has been retrieved from storage. So you can see that even though the order of operations here is we do this, then this, then this, this uh, doesn't actually happen until later on. So the problem there is that uh, if we're relying on something uh, being retrieved from storage, we can run into some issues. So um, this is a really common thing that uh, I guess people email me about and they get sort of stuck on, is that let's say they're trying to load in, uh, let's just say a username from storage. Uh, so they might do something like this. Maybe they set up a, um, a member variable called username. That can be a string. And we'll just uh, we'll try and load this uh, test value as the username. And so what they might try and do here is initially people uh, will often try this. Uh, they'll do this dot uh, username equals this dot storage dot get uh, test. Uh, but as I mentioned, that's we can't do that because that returns a promise. That's not what we want to do. We need to handle uh, that promise with this then handler. So once you get past that hurdle you might change the code to something like this. So inside of the handler so that we can actually make use of that data, uh, people might try this.username equals, um, and we'll just set it to, to the data that's returned there. So that will be hello. So we're setting this.username to be hello. And then later on, let's say we have another function here called um, display username. And inside of this, it just logs out whatever uh, the value for this username is. And so then we might have at the bottom of the iron view did load function here, we might call this dot display username. And so the idea is that uh, we first load in the data and we set this dot username uh, to whatever the data is that is returned. And then we call this dot display username, which is going to log out the username for us. So if I try to um, run that now, you can see that we get the start of iron view did load, then we get the end of iron view did load as before. Um, and we will also have that data has been uh, retrieved from storage happening at the end again still. Uh, but then we have this undefined being logged out uh, on line 32, uh, which is in the display username function. So this dot username is currently undefined, uh, but we want it to be hello. And so looking at this, it's not immediately obvious what's happening. It seems like you know, we're loading it in and when we're trying to display the username and that should be set and we should be able to display it. Uh, but the problem is that this code, as we can see from this console.log message here, it doesn't run until right at the very end. So everything else happens before this happens. So all the synchronous code runs before we get to this, uh, which means that since we are accessing this synchronously, this synchronous code where with this console.log statement and it's triggered synchronously here, uh, this is going to happen too late and it's not going to be defined yet. Uh, if we were to say have a, a button that we could click now that would trigger this uh, function, 
uh, you would see that the second time when we click it, it will be defined because it's had that time to uh, retrieve that data from storage and then set it up on this .username. So in order to get this kind of code to work, it's just important that if you're relying on some data that's being loaded asynchronously like this, then you need to trigger whatever way you're going to you know, use that value, you need to make sure that it is triggered from within that handler that is also triggered after the data has been loaded. So instead of triggering this.display username here, we would instead do it inside of the handler after we set that data. So now this function isn't going to get triggered until that data is set. So if we save that again now and try again, now you can see that again we have our start and end happening at the top there. Uh, but now we actually get that hello value being logged out for uh, this dot username uh, rather than getting that undefined value. So basically what's happening now is we have, we have that logging out, uh, we have this call being made but this code doesn't execute yet. We go straight to this and then eventually we come back into this block here. This code runs which calls uh, the display username function and then that's the last thing that happens. And I think the main problem that a lot of people run into with this is that uh, even when they kind of understand this concept, they still uh, they still kind of attempt to use it uh, a uh, synchronously when it's asynchronous. So uh, I've seen things like people then sort of creating functions that uh, they'll call. Um, maybe you create a function called like get from uh, storage, and then you know have this code in there, and then call that function from somewhere. But in the end, it's still asynchronous and you're still trying to use it synchronously. The only way to actually make sure you have that value loaded in properly and you know, be able to access it is to make sure that you're only using it after this code has run. And the other thing I will mention here, um, and I do have an article on this as well, so I'll link to it so you can read about it in more depth, but you can also create uh, asynchronous functions which allow you to use it essentially allows you to write asynchronous code in a more synchronous manner. So if you wanted to, you could create a function like get from storage. And then in this, uh, we could say return that um, call to load that test data. So we'll just return that. And I'm just going to comment out all this stuff. Uh, for now, it's not really important to the example. And so what we can do, so right now that's going to return a promise. And so if we wanted to make use of that uh, in here, we could do uh, we could do something like this dot uh, get from storage dot. And since that is returning the promise for us, we could just add the then handle here and then do whatever we want with that data inside of here. Uh, but you can uh, also use this async a, uh, a wait uh, syntax. So if we declare this as an asynchronous function and then we add an await uh, before the uh, the method that's going to return the promise. Uh, instead we can just set uh, the username to be the result of that directly. So we can just do this.username equals uh, this.get from storage. Uh, said before that you can't do that because it returns a promise. Uh, what it's returning isn't what we want. We wanted to uh, handle that promise and then use that the data that it actually resolves with. Uh, but in this case, if you are using an asynchronous function, you can just directly assign it like this. And then in your uh, say template file here, if I wanted to display that, uh, if I were just to write username like you usually would, you'll see that this won't work. Uh, that wasn't the error I was expecting actually, but uh, I've said this has to be a string. Uh, since we're using this async uh, syntax, we won't be able to do that because it's not a string. So I'll just get rid of the type and that should get us past this error. Uh, so you can see it's just um, the interpolation renders out as object object here. Uh, so it's like it's a special object that handles this asynchronous behavior for us. Uh, but if you just add the async pipe to it, it's just going to display the, the data for you correctly. So now it says hello. So even though this is um, kind of this using this synchronous syntax by using the async function or the async syntax here with a wait, it allows us to still display that value correctly. Uh, so if you're uh, a beginner and still trying to get your head around the whole asynchronous versus synchronous thing, I probably wouldn't worry about these async functions. I think they kind of um, 
I guess muddy the waters a little bit, make it a little bit more confusing. Uh, but if you do have you know a solid grasp on this and you prefer this kind of syntax where you don't have to write handlers and stuff like that, then uh, asynchronous uh, functions can come in handy. Okay, so I hope this video cleared up a, a few things if um, you find the whole asynchronous thing confusing. I really do think it's, it's one of those things that when you do get it, you get it. It clicks in your head and it kind of seems simple after that, but that initial sort of learning curve can be quite confusing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.